Hey, Steve, do you like your new set? See the wonder-stricken child Hear the elders' wise and so Wouldn't you love to know? Wouldn't you love to know? Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, uh, the Loft Sessions, formerly known as the uh, Live from the Vault. This is uh, episode 11, I believe, and uh, it's nice to see you. Um, I should mention this coffee cup here. Um, come fall, we're, we're, start, we're trying to think creatively about how to raise money, and we're, we're, starting to, we're, we're thinking about the idea of maybe um, having corporate sponsorship cups um, that we use. And so I'll, I can, you know, you send me, you know, I don't know, 10 grand or something, and I'll put your cup in, in like this. And people will go, oh, wow, um, I, I want to buy that person's stuff. So um, it's just a thought. Maybe it's crass. I don't know. And, and, and Jay had the idea that we, we could maybe have a shelf behind that features all the cups from the different sessions. I don't know. Product placement? I... Um, hey, listen, this is uh, kind of special. The whole Signpost family is here. Um, uh, you might want to say hi to Dave Zaglinski, who's been uh, doing sound for me and management for the last 30 years. Uh, he's here, and uh, also uh, Faye Hall is here. I, I've asked her to to come, and so I have a warm body to sing to. I, ho- I hope that doesn't sound inappropriate. I mean that in the best way. But Faye, why don't you come here, just so people can see you? If you have phoned my office in the last, like Faye's worked with me for probably I don't know, two or three hundred years, I think. This is Faye. Thirteen years. Thirteen years. Why don't you take a minute and tell people how much you love working for me? I have the best bosses in the world. Dave Zaglinski and Steve Bell have made my life complete. <laughs> oh, thank you. There'll be a little extra something in your Christmas stocking for that um, little thing. So yeah, Faye has worked with us for a very, very long time. And if you've called our office, chances are you've, you've spoken to her. Or if you've done concerts, she's helped you guide you through that. I'll also introduce, maybe Jay, why don't you take off your headset and pop your head in here too. Uh, Jay? I'm on this camera right now. Oh, you're on that camera? Can people see you right now? I think so. Hi. Jay, Jay is the guy, uh, he's, he's, he's a, a newer um, uh, a member of the Signpost family. He came on board several months ago. Um, quite literally, uh, the week that we came off the road because of COVID, um, I, I went to Jay and I said, is it possible we can do like live stream concerts? And he said, I think so. And he sort of got on the internet and found stuff and learned things. And, and if you watch the first ones, there was all kinds of problems. And he just kept... Uh, tenaciously uh, working out props until we could do this well. And so, um, Jay, thank you very, very much for all that. I'm going to start with a song. Um, I've already done it once um, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, well, several weeks ago, uh, but it's been in, um, requested. And, I, and I'm running out of songs and shirts uh, for these things, so at a certain point we have to, we have to repeat. <laughs> Blameless and holy Whatever he breathes 
part? Sure. Some of you will know this. You can sing along. I know there's kids out there watching, and, uh, and I know they often love to sing this. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth of your glory are full. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth of your glory are full. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Sing holy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth of your glory are full. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth of your glory are full. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. All right. Hopefully you guys are singing along. Uh, some of my favorite moments of my career have been doing that song uh, with full orchestra. And uh, to hear that with horns blazing and strings doing their thing and a, a large audience singing is, is uh, a little foretaste of the kingdom of God, I think. Um, and of course, when we think about uh, lyrics like that, uh, when we, the power and might of God in, in a world that, um, that abuses power and might, that we always have to remember that power and might is defined by who Jesus is and who Jesus was, um, not by how we use um, and abuse it. Um, and so uh, one needs not to be concerned that God is almighty <laughs> or powerful uh, because uh, behind all that, God is good. That's what we believe. That's what I believe anyway. So it's just fine. <laughs> um, here's an older one. My buddy Joe Braun uh, taught this song to me years and years ago. I, I don't know, I was 16 maybe. Um, and it's a Rodney Crowell song. It was a, a, a country singer-songwriter, but the version I heard was Jonathan Edwards. I don't know if you guys remember Jonathan Edwards. I hear the ocean calling my name, Carolina. Do you remember that one? Beautiful song. Uh, but he, he did a version of this. It's called Song for the Life. And uh, I've probably been singing this song longer than almost any other song in my repertoire. And I've just never gotten tired of it. It's just, I think it's as good as songwriting gets. Well, I don't drink anymore like I used to. Lately, it just ain't my style. And the hard times don't hurt like they ought to. They pass quicker like when I was a child. Somehow I learned how to listen For the sound like the sun dying down In the magic the morning is bringing There's a song for this friend I have my feet on the ground Well, the midsummer day sits so heavy Don't they 
Song, eh? I love that song. Um, a couple of days ago, I was uh, part of a Zoom um, class of of, uh, of students of, of of grade one to six students in uh, the Maritimes. They asked me to come and, and do a class for them. They were called Saints in Training, and uh, I love that. I, ever since I was a little boy, and I and I saw um, the mo- a movie about Saint Francis of Assisi called. Um, uh, Brother, Son, Sister, Moon. I remember it just knocked me out, that, that film. And I remember coming home thinking, I, I want to be a saint when I grow up. And uh, so saints in training, and, and I, I know I'm not there, and I, and I won't get there, but it's a, it's a lofty goal and not a bad one. There are worse goals, um, for sure. Um, and uh, so, uh, but in, in the class, and I talked about different saints that really uh, mattered to me, St. John of the Cross, St. Francis, of course, Claire, um, John of Kronstadt, um, who uh, is responsible for this next song. Um, but someone asked me, uh, one of the kids asked me, do you have a favorite song you ever wrote and why? And, uh, and this would be it. It's called Burning Ember. And uh, it was on my album called Burning Ember in 1994 or something. And it's not that I think this is the best song I've ever written or hopefully not the best song I'll ever write. I hope I have some good ones yet to, to come. But this was the first song I wrote where I, I, I was, it was very clear to me that the song was wiser than I am, um, that the song somehow that came out knew more than I do. <laughs> and uh, I would consider this song one of the mentors in my life. I have learned so much by thinking about it and talking about it and um, it was inspired by uh, a little excerpt in a book uh, by um, John of Kronstadt, who led late 1800s um, Russia. Uh, uh, he wrote a book of reflections. It's not he wrote a book. Someone collected his, his daily prayers and put them in a book called My Life in Christ. And in there, he talks about the dignity of the human being. And boy, do we need to hear this word these days uh, with all the, the chaos that's going on in, in, in our world, and especially North America. Um, but that, that the fundamental dignity of the human person is their first and foremost God's good idea. <laughs> um, and, no one can, and no one can take that from anybody. I can't take that from myself. I, Steve Bell, am first and foremost God's good idea. And you are first and foremost God's good idea. And I don't respect you because of what you've done with that. I don't respect you first and foremost because I like this or that about you. I respect you first and foremost because you a God's good idea. <laughs> and that's your starting place, right? And uh, John Kronstadt said, the human being, think about it. He says, we're like a piece of metal. If you take metal and put it in fire, metal has the ability to take on the qualities of fire. If you leave it there long enough, 
cold metal turns warm. It, it takes on heat. Leave it there longer, it takes on um, light. Um, um, it can take on not only uh, red light, but hot white light. And it, it can retain that light. You can take it out and you can hold it up as a beacon. You can burn with it. You can start a fire with it. If you leave it out too long, it just turns, turns back to cold metal. So here's another uh, fundamental dignity of the human person. Um, that it is in with your capacity to lay your, your life within the fire of God's divine love in order to become by grace what God is by nature. Anything less is beneath your dignity. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, and we need to hear that. And, and uh, we need that to sink in. I'll say it again. Um, you have the capacity. It belongs to your nature that you can lay your life in the fire of God's divine love in order to become by grace what God is by nature. Light and goodness and love and beauty and all those things. So uh, this song came from it. Um, it's called Burning Ember. Um, I think this is the key. Again, this one sounds really good with the full orchestra, but we can't do that right now, so I'll give you what I got here. Judge for yourself how great is the one Who lives in God Whose God is love Like an iron when left in embers bright Everything is fire, everything is light Oh, love, most beautiful you are Oh, flame of joy within my heart Burning ember, I remember Love's first light Burning 
It's burning in burr. Okay, I'll do another about a saint. This is inspired by all those kids I uh, spent some time with the other day. Hope some of you are watching. <laughs> Uh, for you guitar nerds, um, uh, this is just a, a regular standard uh, tuning, except for I turn the low E um, all the way down to a C. Um, so it gives me... Um, if I'm playing the key of C, I get this bass note, which I wouldn't have otherwise. Okay, it's in tune. This is called Birth of a Song, and it's, uh, it's inspired uh, by the life of St. Francis of Assisi, um, who I've been inspired with for almost my entire conscious life. <laughs> what a saint. Oh, my goodness. And the story of the guy is, is uh, simply uh, born, I think, 13th, 14th century, something like that, um, a while ago, and, uh, and uh, born into wealth and privilege, um, and rejected all of that, and, and uh, gave up his inheritance, and... Um, his power, um, in a sense, uh, put on a, a monk's habit and lived the rest of his life, um, most would say in, um, in poverty, I think he would say in freedom. <laughs> and he was a bit nutty, perhaps, if you kind of read between the lines. He loved to dance and sing, and uh, he loved poetry, and he loved birds and bees, and he loved children, and he loved old people, and he loved the well, and he loved the wounded and the sick, and he loved the rich, and he loved the poor. He's just one of the world's great lovers. And uh, years ago, I wrote this song. Uh, I, had, I came to a very long writer's block in my life. It is actually... I'll tell you a little bit about this if you got a moment. Um, I had come back from from uh, a trip to Israel and, and Palestine. The trip was to actually visit uh, West Bank and and see um, uh, some of the agony of Palestinian people in that in that situation. It's a very complex story, and I'm not going to go into it. But I did see a, a lot, and, and a lot of it was very painful to to, to witness. Um, and to feel, and I came back muted. I couldn't. Um, uh, I, I, I couldn't. I had no voice. Just from, and it was right during the, t- the second intifada. It was an active military zone. I just saw stuff I can never unsee, um, and it stopped me. I, I didn't write a song for three or four years, and um, and I remember uh, talking to my friend Heather Bishop, a Manitoba, uh, just a legendary Manitoba singer songwriter. And much beloved. And she asked me how things were going. And I says, I think I'm done. I don't think I have any songs left. And she goes, oh, of course you do. And she handed me keys to a little cabin she built down in southern Manitoba and says, go here. She says, it's not fancy. Uh, there's not a lot there. She says, don't take much, um, you know, water and a little bit of food and go for several days and your, your song will come back. And it did. Um, it was there that I read the, uh, one of the lives of uh, St. Francis of Assisi called um, The Perfect Joy of St. Francis. And um, when I finished the book, I remember just being so overwhelmed by the story down in this environment where I, was, I didn't have the distraction of internet or fancy foods or anything. It was just simple. And uh, the simplicity of the countryside. Um, and I was able to hear the story in a way I might not have otherwise. And uh, I remember putting down the book and falling into a stillness that I've never experienced. It lasted for many, many, many hours. Um, and when I came out of it, the song was waiting for me at the other end. God is everything to me. I myself can do nothing, spare nothing, bear nothing. Old weathered woman waiting. Author of the mysteries Ecstasy of blazing suns and swooning moons And these crooning winds and water, earth and fire Spirit yearning flesh 
Consummating desire, tossing off the soul's attire. Ever I in you and you in me. Mirroring the ancient crash. Now absorbed in odd emotion, disturbed and shocked devotion, child of mine, child of eternity. a Steve Bell concert be if there wasn't a, a blown lyric? The stupid thing is they're right there too. <laughs> oh well. Um, okay, I've got one more to do for you. Uh, I, I, gotta, I, I wanna show you something. I, I'm, well first let me tell you that this is the last of these sessions now, probably till uh, the first week of September. I start holidays next week. I've got grandkids coming and, and all that. And then when I get back, Jay's gone. Um, we've got a lot of work to do to finish up the album, the new album, get it to market uh, or to sort of production. And, and so that just takes up our time. So, so this will be it till the first week of September, but we will be back then um, uh, to sing for you some more. Um, and you can always go back if, if you want. To, there's, there's a lot of these now online. You can go to YouTube and, and, uh, and, and review some of these concerts if you, if you need a, a, a music fix. Uh, the, the album that I'm working on is called Wouldn't You Love to Know? Um, and right now, the, the, it's, we've, we've finished recording it. Um, I'm gonna, it's going to look something like this. It's going to be um, a, a book uh, with a CD in the back. <laughs> and I'm just working on the book right now. Uh, the the uh, design um, is um, is by Roberta uh, Landreth, who has um, uh, won a Juno for her work on my pilgrimage album. Um, it's really really great, and it's a beautiful beautiful album. And the book will include. I'm going to ask her to anyways a little note from her about the imagery and and all that goes into that. There's also a portrait that's going to be in it of myself by a, uh, an Ontario artist named Roger Schmidt. Um, and we're going to use some of that in the design of the, of the, the album. Um, it's not the kind of portrait you'd expect to see. It's not a Smiley Steve one, but I, I wasn't in a great mood <laughs> the day we did it. Um, and, and that's kind of how I felt. But the book kind of explains a little bit um, about why that image. And, um, um, and, uh, and I think Roger is going to also give me a little bit of a write-up as to uh, the process of, of making that portrait. 
Um, but let me, I just wanted to, I want to read to you. I, I, I'm writing this little booklet, and what it is, it's going to be, there's 13 songs in the album, so there's going to be 13 chapters where I kind of talk a little bit about, about each song, um, almost like an art curator walking you through a museum and telling you a little bit about each piece. Um, hopefully, uh, uh, I, I, and I do believe this, that songs are open, good songs are open source documents. It doesn't have to mean to you what it meant to me, um, but sometimes it's nice to know what the artist was going through. Um, but let me, if you don't mind, let me read you from the introduction of the book. Um, I, I just find that if I read out loud and hear myself say it, I'll find problems with it. It's not long. I think it's 621 words, two pages. Um, but this is, uh, this is just an excerpt from the introduction, so you get an idea of what the book is going to be like. I, I, okay. This particular collection of songs perhaps cuts a wider swath of thought and experience than previous albums. And at points... It's as personal as anything I've ever written. In many ways, the last four years have been both sad and unsettling. I, I watched, for example, my father suffer through two cancers until this pass, his passing last summer. And as much as I thought I was prepared for his death, I really wasn't, not by a long shot. Besides missing him terribly, there's an unfamiliar sense of lostness or adriftness that clings to my days now. And I'm not quite sure what to do about that. Adding to my disorientation the ascendancy of a profoundly unprincipled man to the throne of the most powerful empire in the world has kept me awake through many a night. In the same period, my involvement in an ultimately unsuccessful battle for indigenous rights left me exhausted and despairing. Additionally, it is during these last years that I have begun to awaken to the urgent plight of God's sacred earth as it gasps for breath under the merciless knee of an ecocidal society. However, in surprising defiance of all these real concerns, a growing awareness of the goodness of God and creation's resilient freshness deep down things continues to inspire melody and rhyme and rhythm. Even in my lowest days, beauty has insisted on being noticed, celebrated, and sung. During the last four years, our first granddaughter Nora was born, and adding to that indescribable gift, our fourth grandchild Vivian recently made her premature appearance. Meanwhile, despite the yawning ruptures in our society, I've continued to experience genuine community amongst beloved friends, neighbors, and family. And while a relentless cacophony of disputing ideologies clamors in our ears, I've somehow learned to be still, down by the river, near our home where the peace of the wild things reliably restores my hope and my joy. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, over the last four years, I've learned something of the goodness of prayer, which has been a rather significant gift for me. Once one gets past the puerile notion that prayer is merely petition or a vain attempt to control outcomes, one realizes there can be nothing quite as delicate and beautiful as prayer, because prayer is participation in the deepest communion of the all with the all, a gospeled foretaste of what is yet to come. In the following chapters, I'll try to reflect a little bit on each song and relay what I think may be interesting detail about the process of their writing and recording. This is a good exercise for me. I've learned from experience and the witness of other artists that works of art often know more than their creators. And so there is good reason to attend to them, not as finished works, but as adaptive and sometimes wise companions on the journey of our lives. It should be noted that although this album was recorded in its entirety during the early months of the COVID-19 crisis, the songs themselves were all written well before this pandemic and before a global response to the murder of George Floyd. The point being, if I'm allowed another metaphor, is that songs are like clothing in that they come out of the laundry smelling one way, but they take on a whole new aroma after having been worn around a campfire. They might look the same, but they're not the same. Given that the ground has recently shifted under our feet, I'm as intrigued as anyone as to what these songs might have to offer now and in days to come. Thanks for reading. Thanks for listening. Thanks for humming along. <laughs> so that's from the introduction to the book, which will be also have the, the new album um, in it. Um, I'll close with this. And... Uh, And 
be, before I do that, let me just do my little pitch here. Um, so when the song is over, we can just be done and we can be done quietly and, and not have to come back to this. If you want to support the work I do, you can. And um, uh, with uh, live streaming took away um, uh, revenues from our recorded product years ago and COVID took away <laughs> our revenues from concerts. And so we're somewhat relying on, on government assistance and donations at this point to keep going. So your donations are, are, are valued and needed and uh, gratefully received. You can go to uh, buymeacoffee.com com forward slash Steve Bell Music. If you want to throw me a couple bucks, it's you can choose to buy me a coffee for three bucks, or two or five coffees if you want. Um, um, that, and that's all those little bits add up a lot. Um, if you want to d- donate more significantly, you can go to stevebell.com forward slash support, and uh, you can anything over twenty dollars uh, you can donate. Uh, we'll give you a tax receipt, um, and you can sign up for monthly donations if you want. It all helps very very much, and thank you very much. And people have been really very, very generous over the last couple of months, and I'm very mindful of that, so thank you very much. I'll end you with this one. I'll end you. I'll, I'll end this with this one. Um, the song is written by a fellow named Ken Medema, or Medema. I'm not quite sure exactly how to say his last name. He's an American singer-songwriter. Um, this, uh, this is on my pilgrimage album. Uh, this is a gooder. Uh, if you've never seen Ken perform, I have. I actually, uh, I did a concert one time with him um, uh, in, in, boy, where is it? In Indianapolis, I think. Uh, it's the only time I've seen him perform live. The guy is a bit of a magical creature. If anybody's seen him, you'll know what I'm talking about. He writes songs like I write songs, but he has this unbelievable gift as well of writing songs on the spot. And he often has a microphone in the audience, and he'll have people come up and tell him a story about their dog or about burnt toast or whatever and he'll listen to the story and then he'll take a minute and and he'll um he'll he'll write a he'll he'll perform a completed song of of their their story on the spot it, it's unbelievable and then occasionally someone will venture for something pretty tender um uh fairly complex uh woundings and and um or losses or whatever and he'll so beautifully just take a minute think and then out of his mouth and off the fingers on the piano comes the most amazing songs. It's, it's really something. This is not that. This is, um, but it's a good one. I'm on my way on a long, long journey. Walk beside me The road is long and brief The rest Take my hand And walk beside me The answer to this riddle Is a quest The riddle says Finding leads to losing Losing lets you find Living leads to dying, but life leaves death behind. Losing leads to finding, that's all that I can say. No one will find life any other way. Take my hand and walk beside me The road is long and brief the rest Take my hand and walk beside me The answer to this riddle is a quest The riddle says finding leads to losing Losing lets you find Living leads to dying But life leaves death behind Losing leads to finding But that's all that I can say No one will find life any other way No 
one will find life any other way. No one will find life any other way. Bless you. Enjoy the rest of your summer. I'll see you in September.